Hi, this is Kendall Boyson, professional life and recovery coach, and you're listening to Encouragementology, the practice of instilling hope. Hi there. Thanks for joining me. On this show, we are unlocking the basics as we explore simple life skills everyone needs but often overlook. In today's fast-paced world, it's no surprise that many people struggle with basic life skills. Between the rise of technology and the hustle of modern life, skills like cooking, budgeting, and effective communication often fall by the wayside. But fear not. By taking small, intentional steps, we can all brush up on these essential skills. Think of it as a fun, ongoing learning adventure, whether it's whipping up a new recipe, setting a simple budget, or mastering the art of active listening. Let's embrace the journey together and support each other in becoming more well-rounded and capable individuals. What is happening to our generation, you ask? Well, every generation has asked the same questions. Every generation has faced their own unique challenges that have shaped who they are and how they respond. Let's go all the way back to the silent generation, 1928 to 1945. They saw the Great Depression in World War II. They grew up during economic hardship and global conflict, which defined their resilience and resourcefulness. They saw post-war rebuilding, building societies and economies which posed significant challenges and opportunities. Then you have the baby boomers, 1946 to 1964. They saw the civil rights movement and Vietnam War. They experienced significant social upheaval and political conflict. They saw economic shifts. They navigated the transition from a manufacturing-based economy to a service-oriented one, along with the challenges of inflation and recession in the 70s. Generation X, 1965 to 1980. Technology change. They witnessed the rise of personal computing and the internet, which transformed the workplace and daily life. There was also a lot of economic uncertainty. They dealt with economic instability, including the stock market crash of 1987 and the recession of the early 90s. Millennials, 1981 to 1996, the digital revolution. They grew up with rapid advancements in technology, which drastically changed communication, work, and entertainment. Economic challenges. They entered the workforce during the Great Recession, facing high unemployment rates and significant student loan debt. And Generation Z, 1997 to 2012. Global connectivity. They have been shaped by the influence of social media and the pressures of maintaining an online presence. They have seen climate change and political unrest and are acutely aware of environmental issues and growing up in a time of significant political polarization and global uncertainty. So you can see we've all been around the block or two. And I think we can all agree that every generation has had some pretty intense challenges to overcome. So, let's put that aside and address some simple life skills that shouldn't be overlooked. Ever heard of time management? That's right, prioritizing tasks and setting realistic deadlines. Avoiding procrastination and effectively scheduling your time. Who struggles with that on a daily basis? We've also seen another life skill go by the wayside, effective communication. This means listening actively and empathetically, expressing thoughts and feelings clearly and assertively without being aggressive. Do you witness that around the water cooler or just in your day-to-day conversation? We've also seen a really big hit on emotional regulation, That is, managing stress and anxiety in healthy ways. Recognizing and processing emotions effectively. 
I think we can all agree it seems to be all over the place. Problem solving. Identifying problems and then breaking them down into manageable parts. Generating and evaluating potential solutions. Many of us just get stuck. It seems too big and too insurmountable to solve. We also have seen a decline in relationship building. That's developing and maintaining healthy relationships. Understanding the importance of boundaries and mutual respect. That doesn't mean building up walls. That means healthy boundaries. What about critical thinking? Evaluating information critically and making informed decisions. Recognizing biases and logical fallacies. When you think of negotiation skills, what do you think of? Winning? Well, negotiating effectively in personal and professional settings means understanding the importance of compromise and finding win-win solutions, not necessarily arm wrestling someone to the ground. If you feel disorganized, that's because we haven't focused on organizational skills, not only with your desk or personal and professional settings, but with your mind. Developing systems for managing information efficiently. And what about adaptability? Adjusting to new situations and changes with flexibility. Embracing change as an opportunity for growth rather than a threat. Okay, anything in there trigger name in? Good. Because our goal is not to assume, but to assess and address. T. Bhattacharya shares unveiling the missing link, the craving of life skills in a high-tech world found on LinkedIn. In a time of unprecedented comfort and convenience, why are more people than ever struggling with depression and suicidal thoughts? The suicide rate in the United States has increased by 33% over the last two decades. Globally, close to 800,000 people die by suicide each year. The rise in suicides and the widespread use of antidepressants indicate that something is amiss in our seemingly perfect world. Let's explore the critical life skills that seem to be missing in the modern age and why they are more important than ever. One might expect that the 21st century with its technological marvels and abundant resources would be an era of unparalleled happiness and fulfillment. However, This is not the case. Despite our incredible advancements, the quality of life hasn't seen the expected improvements. Over the past millennia, humans have made enormous strides in improving their living conditions. Today, we enjoy unparalleled comfort and facilities, yet happiness seems to elude many. The question is, why? In earlier times, individuals were primarily focused on meeting their basic needs. They had the support of large, extended families who provided guidance and shared wisdom. Education prioritized not just knowledge, but also the essential life skills needed for a meaningful existence. Ancient cultures like India had institutions known as gurukuls, where the focus was on imparting principles of life along with knowledge. These principles equipped individuals with the skills to navigate life's challenges effectively. Fast forward to today, and we find that the rapid progress of our society has transformed the educational landscape. The sheer volume of information that needs to be conveyed to students has shifted the focus away from life skills. Modern education systems tend to install judgment from a young age. We're conditioned to categorize things as good or bad which later translates into a mindset of me versus the world. The consequence is that many adults struggle with conflict resolution, decision-making in ambiguous situations, collaboration, non-judgmental thinking, and resilience in the face of setbacks. Lack of conflict resolution and collaboration skills 
can lead to workplace disputes and strained relationships. The Harvard Business Review reports that 85% of employees deal with conflict on some level. When faced with life challenges, individuals often revert to the primal fight, flight, or freeze. Other minds rely on the patterns we've known since childhood, and we default to good versus bad thinking, often blaming others. Coaches today are witnessing a surge in clients seeking support, not just to make more money, but to lead happier lives and change unproductive behaviors. Disillusioned teens and frustrated adults are searching for meaning and fulfillment. Middle-aged individuals often reflect on their lives and feel like they haven't created any real value. They yearn for a sense of fulfillment and purpose, and they've realized that following society's prescribed template doesn't necessarily lead to happiness. Society exerts a tremendous influence on individuals. We tend to accept social norms without applying our own judgment. Human beings are social creatures, and the need to belong is natural. But everyone has a unique life path and core values. What fulfills one person may not have any meaning for another. Many individuals find themselves following someone else's path, hoping to find happiness, but only experiencing frustration. They grapple with existential questions, wondering why they aren't content, why they don't have the desired relationships they want, or why they're not good enough. These internal struggles are a significant threat to human well-being. If we don't address them, they could lead to disastrous consequences for mankind. The good news is that human beings are incredibly capable and can change their reality. So, here are seven strategies to consider for personal transformation. Number one, self-awareness. Self-awareness is the cornerstone of personal growth and transformation. It involves deep introspection to understand your true self, including your strengths, weaknesses, values, and motivations. Here are some essential steps to enhance self-awareness. Reflection. Set aside time for introspection. Think about your feelings. Write them down. Recording your experiences can help you gain clarity about who you are and what you want. Feedback. Seek it from trusted friends, family, or mentors. They can offer valuable insights that you might not see yourself. Mindfulness. Stay present and tuned into your thoughts and emotions. Mindfulness exercises can help you become more aware of your reactions and behavior. Values assessment. Identify your core values. Understanding what truly matters to you will guide your decisions and actions. Number two, setting the right mindset. Cultivating the right mindset is crucial for personal transformation. Embrace a growth mindset that views challenges and failures as opportunities for learning and growth. Here's how to foster this mindset. Embrace challenges. Welcome them as opportunities to learn and develop resilience. Recognize that failure is a stepping stone to success. Monitor your self-talk. Replace self-criticism with self-compassion. Encourage yourself with positive affirmations and a belief in your own abilities. When setbacks occur, analyze them. Understand what went wrong and what you can do differently next time. Failure is a teacher, not a punishment. And embrace change and be open to new experiences. An adaptable mindset enables you to thrive in a rapidly evolving world. Number three, identifying priorities and planning. Identifying your priorities and creating a clear plan for achieving them is fundamental in reducing stress and uncertainty. 
Here's how you could go about doing that. First, define your short-term and long-term goals. Prioritize them based on their importance and relevance to your life. Set SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This framework helps you create actionable plans. Break it down. Divide your goals into smaller, manageable steps. This approach makes your objective less overwhelming and more achievable. And there's that time management. Allocate time for working towards your goals. Efficient time management allows you to make steady progress. Number four, building resilience. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks and adversities. And we all need that, right? Strengthening your resilience equips you to face life's challenges with grace and determination. So consider this. When faced with difficulties, practice adaptive thinking, reframe negative thoughts, and maintain a hopeful perspective. Develop healthy ways to cope with stress, like meditation, exercise, or talking to a trusted friend or therapist. Maintain a strong supportive network. Surround yourself with friends and family who can provide emotional support during tough times. And again, view setbacks as opportunities for growth. Analyze what you can learn from them and how they can make you stronger. So don't overlook this. We've heard it before. Learn from your mistakes, right? But really, take some time to analyze a challenge that didn't go your way. Some sort of setback or maybe it was out and out failure. What can you learn from that? Did you actually practice this type of strategy when it happened? Or did it take you a while? Or are you still taking time to get over it? It's never too late to learn. Number five, nurturing meaningful relationships. Meaningful relationships are vital for well being. Cultivating and maintaining such relationships can be a source of emotional support and happiness. So here's some ideas on how to nurture them. Remember, quality over quantity. It's okay if your circle is small. Focus on a few deep and meaningful connections rather than a vast network of acquaintances. Quality relationships provide way more fulfillment. Effective communication. Learn these skills, including active listening and assertiveness. Good communication fosters understanding and empathy. Develop empathy and compassion towards others. Understand their perspectives and offer support when needed. Learn to navigate conflicts constructively. Conflict is a natural part of any relationship, and resolving it can lead to greater understanding and harmony. Number six, adding value. Contributing to the well being of others and making a positive impact on the world can provide a profound sense of purpose. So here's how you can add value recognize your unique strengths and talents, determine how you can use them to benefit others. So many people say, eh, I don't have time and nobody, nobody wants what I have. That is so untrue. Just show up and see how you can be utilized. Engage in volunteer work and charitable activities. Giving back to the community can feel deeply fulfilling. Mentor and support others in their personal and professional development. Empowering others is a valuable way to add value. Maybe you have some skills that you didn't think were translatable to someone else. People can learn from you just like you can learn from others. Practice kindness and generosity in your daily interactions. Small acts of kindness can have a significant impact on others. Number seven, continuous learning. In a rapidly changing world, the willingness to learn and adapt is essential. 
Continuous learning ensures that you remain curious, open-minded, and adaptable. So here is how to embrace lifelong learning. Stay curious. Cultivate a sense of curiosity about the world and be eager to explore new ideas, experiences, and perspectives. Never have we had this much information within our grasp. Get off of social media and regurgitating all the things that are going on in conversations around you. Pick a subject, dig a little deeper, and do some research. Keep reading and researching, staying informed about developments in your field and beyond. Take advantage of online courses and resources that they offer to acquire new skills and knowledge. Continuously seek feedback from others as it helps you identify areas of improvement and growth. By recognizing the importance of these skills and taking steps to acquire and apply them, we can pave the way for a happier, more content, and more resilient future. I won't bore you with back-in-the-day reflections, but I will ask you a question. Where are you strong and where are you weak? Let's be honest, modern-day conveniences are very convenient to the point of debilitating. As much as I love them, I'm sad that they have played a big part in zapping some of my strengths such as spell check. Spell check has killed, well, spelling. No need for whiteout. Do kids even know what whiteout is? Or that correction cartridge for your typewriter? I've joked about just getting close enough for spell check to pick it up, but when you think about it, that's not really funny. Web search, or what the masses have coined as Googling it, has killed wonder and ponder. Remember when you had a question and you asked others, or better yet, you pondered? To ponder is to think about something carefully, especially before making a decision or reaching a conclusion. Wow, that's an antiquated idea, isn't it? Online ordering, especially Prime, has killed patience. If you live in a metropolitan area, you can get things the same day. People used to travel a week by horse and carriage to get supplies. Oh, and when your loved one left, you couldn't talk to them until they returned. This brings me to cell phones, which have, well, killed a lot of things. Anonymity, free time, rest, relaxation, and paying a visit. Don't even get me started on texts. On the Art of Improvement's YouTube channel, I found Nicholas Cole's 20 Things Most People Learn Too Late in Life. Take a listen. Life is a journey of twists and turns, peaks and valleys, mountains to climb, and oceans to explore. Good times and bad times, happy times and sad times. But always, life is a movement forward. No matter where you are on the journey, in some way, you are continuing on. And that's what makes it so magnificent. One day, you're questioning what on earth will ever make you feel happy and fulfilled. And the next, you're perfectly in flow, writing the most important book of your entire career. What nobody ever tells you, though, when you are a wide-eyed child, are all the little things that come along with growing up. One, most people are scared of using their imagination. They've disconnected with their inner child. They don't feel they are creative. They like things just the way they are. Two, your dream doesn't really matter to anyone else. Some people might take interest. Some may support you in your quest. But at the end of the day, nobody cares or will ever care about your dream as much as you. Three, friends are relative to where you are in your life. Most friends only stay for a period of time, usually in reference to your current interest. But when you move on or your priorities change, so too do the majority of your friends. Four, your potential increases with age. As people get older, they tend to think that they can do less and less, when in reality, they should be able to do more and more, because they have had time to soak up more knowledge. Being great at something is a daily habit. You aren't just born that way. Five, spontaneity is the sister of creativity. 
If all you do is follow the exact same routine every day, you will never leave yourself open to moments of sudden discovery. Do you remember how spontaneous you were as a child? Anything could happen at any moment. 6. You forget the value of touch later on. When was the last time you played in the rain? When was the last time you sat on a sidewalk and looked closely at the cracks, the rocks, the dirt, the one weed growing between the concrete and the grass nearby? Do that again. You will feel so connected to the playfulness of life. 7. Most people don't do what they love. It's true. The masses are not the ones who live the lives they dreamed of living. And the reason is because they didn't fight hard enough. They didn't make it happen for themselves. And the older you get, and the more you look around, the easier it becomes to believe that you'll end up the same. Don't fall for the trap. 8. Many stop reading after college. Ask anyone you know the last good book they read. And I'll bet most of them respond with, Wow, I haven't read a book in a long time. 9. People talk more than they listen. There is nothing more ridiculous to me than hearing two people talk at each other. Neither one listening, but waiting for the other person to stop talking so they can start up again. 10. Creativity takes practice. It's funny how much we as a society praise and value creativity, and yet seem to do as much as we can to prohibit and control creative expression, unless it is in some way profitable. If you want to keep your creative muscle pumped and active, you have to practice it on your own. 11. Success is a relative term. As kids, we're taught to reach for success. What does that really mean? Success to one person could mean the opposite for someone else. Define your own success. 12. You can't change your parents. A sad and difficult truth to face as you get older. You can't change your parents. They are who they are. Whether they approve of what you do or not, at some point, no longer matters. Love them for bringing you into this world and leave the rest at the door. 13. The only person you have to face in the morning is yourself. When you're younger, it feels like you have to please the entire world. You don't. Do what makes you happy and create the life you want to live for yourself. You'll see someone you truly love staring back at you every morning, if you can do that. 14. Nothing feels as good as something you do from the heart. No amount of money or achievement or external validation will ever take the place of what you do out of pure love. Follow your heart and the rest will follow. 15. Your potential is directly correlated to how well you know yourself. Those who know themselves and maximize their strengths are the ones who go where they want to go. Those who don't know themselves and avoid the hard work of looking inward, live life by default. They lack the ability to create for themselves their own future. 16. Everyone who doubts you will always come back around. That kid who used to bully you will come asking for a job. The girl who didn't want to date you will call you back once she sees where you're headed. It always happens that way. Just focus on you. Stay true to what you believe in and all the doubters will eventually come asking for help. 17. You are a reflection of the five people you spend the most time with. Nobody creates themselves by themselves. We are all mirror images, sculpted through the reflections we see in other people. This isn't a game you play by yourself. Work to be surrounded by those you wish to be like, and in time, you too will carry the very things you admire in them. 18. Beliefs are relative to what you pursue. Wherever you are in life, and based on who is around you, and based on your current aspirations, those are the things that shape your beliefs. Nobody explains, though, that beliefs then are not fixed. There is no right and wrong. It is all relative. Find what works for you. 19. Anything can be a vice. Be wary. Again, there is no right and wrong as you get older. A coping mechanism to one could be a way to relax on a Sunday to another. Just remain aware of your habits and how you spend your time. And what habits start to increase in frequency 
and then question where they are coming from in you and why you feel compelled to repeat them. Never mistakes, always lessons. As I said, know yourself. 20. Your purpose is to be you. What is the meaning of life? To be you. All of you. Always. In everything you do. Whatever that means to you. You are your own creator. You are your own evolving masterpiece. Growing up is the realization that you are both the sculpture and the sculptor, the painter and the portrait. Paint yourself however you wish. Have you heard the term hard skills or soft skills? Well, hard skills are teachable abilities and soft skills are personal attributes. So think about this when you think of hard skills, like proficiency in software or technical skills, language proficiencies like Spanish or French or machine operation, equipment handling, okay? But then soft skills are personal attributes and interpersonal abilities that influence how effectively individuals interact with others. This is something like communication, public speaking, teamwork, collaboration, problem solving, critical thinking, adaptability and flexibility, leadership or management, and of course, organization and time management. Bruce Tolgan shows us how to begin boosting your soft skills found at Psychology Today. Soft skills, like any skill, can be practiced and improved. Isn't that great news? While we all have natural strengths and weaknesses, when it comes to soft skills, that doesn't mean they are static, immovable matters of personality. All it takes to begin boosting your soft skills and leveraging your natural strengths is a little focused self-evaluation. What exactly constitutes a soft skill and why is somewhat subjective. Ask any boss what soft skills they're looking for, and you'll likely get as many answers as there are people. So here's a list of soft skills most commonly sought by leaders, managers, and employers. We can use this list as a starting point and then make up our own. What are the soft skills that matter most in your organization, in your family, on your team? Self-regulation. This is regularly assessing one's own thoughts, words, actions against clear, meaningful standards and one's own performance against specific goals, timelines, guidelines, and parameters. How often do you do a self-evaluation? How often do you step back and evaluate your own thoughts, words, and actions? And how often do you balance those against others? Personal responsibility. This is staying focused on what you can control directly, principally yourself, and controlling your own responses in the face of factors outside of your control we could all take a little more personal responsibility, especially focusing on what we can control ourselves. Positive attitude. Maintaining and conveying a positive, generous, enthusiastic demeanor in one's expressions, gestures, words, and tone. Okay, I'm going to say that again. I want you to think about your positive attitude and those you come in contact with. Maintaining and conveying a positive, generous, enthusiastic demeanor in one's expressions, gestures, words, and tone. Hmm. Good work habits. Now, this can be in an office or at home. Wellness, self-preservation, timeliness, organization, productivity, quality, 
follow through, and initiative. As you balance your work habits against those around you, where do you fare? Are you on the high end? Or are you on the low end? Interpersonal communication, attentive listening, observing and reading, perceiving and empathizing, effective use of words, tone, expressions, and gestures, verbal, written, and otherwise, one-on-one and in groups, in person, and remotely. Wow, did you think about that when you think about interpersonal communication? There are so many ways we can do that in person or remote, online, or one-on-one, in a group. Think about all the ways you communicate. Where do you feel strong and where do you feel like you need some more work? Proactive learning. Keeping an open mind, suspending judgment, questions, assumptions, and seeking out information, technique, and perspective. And studying, practicing, and contemplating in order to build one's stored knowledge base, skill set, and wisdom. It's more than just opening a book. Keeping an open mind, suspending judgment, questioning assumptions, and seeking out information. How does that sit with what you're doing today? Problem solving, mastering established best practices, proven repeatable solutions for dealing with regular reoccurring decisions so as to avoid reinventing the will. Use repeatable solutions to improvise when addressing decisions that are new but similar. Is that how you handle your problem solving? Can you have repeatable solutions for dealing with regular recurring decisions? Do you organize your brain that way? Decision-making. Identifying and considering multiple options, assessing the pros and cons of each, and choosing the course of action closest to the desired outcome. Many of our decisions are made reactively. Something happens, and then we just respond. But considering multiple options means you have to take a break, step back, Get the bigger picture, take the thought, move it around 3 or 4D in your brain in order to see all sides. Respect for context. Reading and adapting to the existing structure, rules, customs, and leadership in an unfamiliar situation. Good citizenship. Accepting, embracing, and observing not just the rights and rewards, but the duties of membership, belonging in a defined group with its own structure, rules, customs, and leadership. Good citizenship is also about embracing other ideas. Again, taking a step back to try to understand where the other person is coming from. Service. Approaching relationships in terms of what you have to offer. Respect, commitment, hard work, creativity, sacrifice rather than what you need or want. So respect what you have to offer, not what you need or want. Hmm, new idea to servicing others. Teamwork. Doing the part assigned or regulated to you to support the larger mission. Coordinating, cooperating, and collaborating with others in pursuit of a shared goal. Supporting and celebrating the success of others. Haven't you always thought of teamwork as just pitching in and helping? How about supporting and celebrating the success of others? Creating a teamwork, a community within a larger organization. Once you have a list of high priority soft skills, figure out which one you should lean into and which you should work on building by identifying the gaps. So, for each skill, ask yourself the following questions and rate them from 1 to 10. Is this a natural strength or 
is this a natural weakness? 10 being the strongest and one the weakest. Is this a skill in which you've practiced and made strong? Or is it a weakness? Is this a skill in which you've gained a lot of experience? Or very little? Is this a skill which you're interested in and motivated? The skills with the highest ratings are your soft skill strengths. Lean into these strengths in your interactions with others, especially when taking on new tasks or supporting collective work. Recognizing a need to sharpen any skill is the first step in growth. Be willing to do a deeper self-evaluation as you come up with an action plan to move forward on your journey of self-discovery. share encouragementology with a friend who needs to know they're not alone in this journey of self-discovery, you can visit encouragementology.com or anywhere you stream your content to receive this episode and all others. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram for additional encouragement throughout the week. So I challenge you, unlocking basic life skills can elevate your daily journey and amplify your confidence. Begin today by embracing small, practical steps to master these essentials and witness how they empower you to thrive and shine in any situation. I know you can do it. Thank you for listening to Encouragementology with Kendall Boyson, where we find positive ways to handle some of life's challenges. Someone threw until the path was clear. That's when I found you, how I wound up here.